three, two, one. All right, what's up, everybody? My name is Hunter Thomas Mounts. This is episode one of the Folks Like Us podcast. And, um, yeah, it's where I interview uh, people with some really special talents, but at the end of the day, they're just folks like us. Uh, episode one is going to be Kyle Austin. Um, he is from western Kansas, uh, nearly nearly the Colorado state line. And, uh, man, I won't say too much because uh, I'm going to let him tell his story but uh, spoiler alert, this is actually the third time we've shot a podcast because uh, the first two times uh, I had no idea what I was doing. So Hey, we're getting pretty good at it by now, though. I'm getting pretty familiar with you, dude. I've, uh, I've learned things about you that I probably never needed to know. Yeah, you're probably going to be able to tell this story without me, yeah. without me here. But uh, anyway, all right, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, Kyle Austin, tell him what's up, buddy. What's up, man? I, should I... I don't know if they're gonna insert the applause later or what, but all yeah. right. Excited to be here, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, buddy. Um, oh, real quick, I gotta I gotta key this uh, mm. this this, uh, this sick intro that I made up. All right, welcome back. All right, Kyle, um, tell us a little bit. Uh, tell us uh, a little bit about about you growing up. Uh, what it was like when when little Kyle was running around in the in the dirt of, of Western Kansas. <laughs> yeah, in all the dirt. Um, yeah, I was. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I was kind of. I was raised in a small town in southwestern Kansas called Lakin. Um, it's over by Colorado border, like you said. Uh, Closest town with a Walmart was 30 minutes away, Garden City, Kansas. Um, yeah, it was just, it was real small. My graduating, I mean, you're from a small town too. Um, graduating class was 30. Um, our town's just a mile by a mile big. It's nothing but wheat fields and wind, and that's about it. Yeah, so uh, what happens whenever... What happens whenever the dog goes missing? Yeah, they the the thing they say is if if you lose your dog, all you got to do is look on the horizon because you'll probably be able to see him in any direction. There's nothing blocking the view. There's no trees and no hills. Hell yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I went to uh, I went to a, a small school as well, uh, a little K through eight school called Strasburg C three, uh, Strasburg, Missouri, and uh, yeah, we had like 10, 10 people in our class. Yeah. Uh, I think there were only there was only two boys uh, in kindergarten. Me and uh, this kid named Dakota, but the rest were girls. And uh, as you as you can imagine, we got to know each other uh, pretty well uh, <laughs> over that eight year period. But uh, then I went to uh, a little bit bigger school for high school. Uh, I think I had 150 people in my class. Did anybody oh, wow. ever Did anybody ever uh, leave or go? From your uh, from your town or from your school? Did you get Did you guys ever get a a weird new kid? Uh, yeah, pretty often. Honestly, like there'd always be somebody that moved in, and then they'd either last like three months and move out, or they Typical. would they would just come in and they'd stick around for a while. But most of the time, they moved in it's three three months and then they were gone. And it's always it's always like something strange that brings them to town too. Yeah, they were, it was like they came from California or something. It was like why here of yeah. all places? Why here? Yeah. It's yeah. like uh so wait you moved to western Kansas to raise salamanders. This is <laughs> this isn't even the climate to raise a salamander, but all right, cool. Okay, you know, we're shocked that it only lasted 3 months, whatever. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Cuz they lost all their salamanders. Um with, uh when was the first time you ever saw a windmill? Were uh, they in your town? Yeah. Um are you talking about turbines or windmills? Sorry. Turbines, the big ones. Turbines, the big yeah. boys. Yeah, we don't. Uh, we don't really have. I'm sure there's turbines around us somewhere, but um, we didn't really have like a bunch of turbines in our area, mostly because all of our land is used for farming okay. or ranching. So we didn't have, you know, wind farms or nothing like that. Uh, I think the closest place is Spearville, and that's like central Kansas. Okay, middle of Kansas. That place has like it's known for having just. Massive amounts of wind or wind turbines. Is that like by Salina? Yeah, Salina. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Gotcha. Uh, so you guys did a lot of farming. Was it like, was it soybean, corn? Would you? Wheat field. We oh, had a bunch wheat. of wheat field, corn, uh, you know, that's basically it. It was just a lot of wheat. Yeah. Gotcha. Did you have a, did you have the prairie dogs? Yeah. We had prairie dogs. Did you shoot the prairie dogs? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, that's all we have to do. Like is drinking and shoot guns. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hell yeah. Um, okay. So obviously you're, you're a musician in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, tell these folks how long you've been in Nashville. Kind of what brought you here? I've been here for about, I'd say it has to be around six months now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I came to, I came out here for a, um, uh, songwriters round. I got invited to, uh, I can't remember when that was probably like June or something like that. Um, but I got, I don't know, it was sometime in 2021, but I got flown out here for a songwriters round. And then I met and hung out with all kinds of people and, um, they were telling me to move. And it was about maybe a week and a half after that, that I was like, yeah, I think I, I think I'm going to move. Okay. And then I started planning and decided on August of last year. And, uh, I picked a date and I was like, Regardless if you're ready or not, that's the time we're moving. Yeah. And that's what I did. So, been here ever since August. Yeah. They're, uh, I mean, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but there's never like a really uh, perfectly convenient time to relocate your entire life in existence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there isn't. You just got, you got to, you got to trust that it's going to be fine no matter what. And you got to just make the leap because otherwise you're going to continue trying to save money or can try and try and continue to be prepared and, You'll end up not doing, just not doing it. Well, and then the uh, there's always the possibility that the the excuses start to start to creep in. Yeah. You know? So yeah, they yeah. add on top of each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Been there. Um, so, you know, this obviously didn't just happen. Um, can you kind of tell us how you got your start? Uh, you know, what made you pick up a guitar? What made you want to sing? All that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, my grandpa played guitar. Um, he got a guitar. He taught himself how to play guitar. The story is, um, and I don't know if it's true or not, um, but the story is he was in the Air Force, which is true, and uh, he was flying a, either it was a test flight or something, and uh, they were testing ejecting or, uh, I, I can't remember exactly how the story was, but he was ejected from the plane, and he parachuted down, and back then they didn't, they couldn't track you or know where you were going. So you had to hitchhike your way back to base. So he hitchhiked his way back to base and, uh, he thought of a song and, um, he wrote, he wanted to write a song about it. So he got a guitar, taught himself how to play guitar. And he wrote a song about hitchhiking back to the army base. He calls it, uh, thumbing my way to nowhere. Yep. Yeah. So he, he, uh, taught himself how to play guitar and um, I got my first guitar whenever I was 10 from both him and my parents. Um, and then he drug me everywhere with him. We played all kinds of um, nursing homes, uh, rest homes in southwestern Kansas, Every damn near every one of them. Um, every week, every Wednesday, we'd go play at a nursing home. And uh, he taught me how to play and write country songs. And that's essentially where I got my start. So your your first guitar was it was it one of his? Uh no, I think he I think he got it from from another person that we performed with regularly. Um, it was just some like really inexpensive, cheap, not good acoustic guitar. <laughs> well, the good the good thing is uh, I heard it came with a good case. It did, yeah, <laughs> a pillow case. Okay, to be exact. Okay. So, it, so it wasn't a hard case. It was a soft. It case. was the softest case you can get. <laughs> don't, hey, don't sleep on the pillowcase. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Man, that's that's really really cool. Um. So did did he? Uh, so obviously you guys you said you played uh, a bunch of nursing homes and stuff like that, mm-hmm. which is super cool because that's a population that is often forgotten about. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's got to be pretty rewarding to uh to give them something that you know that you know nobody really ever gives them anything it feels like feels like a lot of people forget about them so that's that's awesome you guys did that but yeah. um 
Did he ever get to see you play your own original stuff, like any of your? Uh-uh. No. So I I wrote uh, I wrote some like we we wrote some songs together that weren't ever turned out to be anything that we really liked. Um, and I wrote some songs, but back then I was writing about a girl in school mm. and meeting her by the water fountain and like, nice. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll check out your locker later, kind of stuff, and so. It wasn't really all that good, but um, yeah, I don't. He never got to see any like original stuff. Uh, every girl that I liked actually went to a different school, so you wouldn't actually know who she is. <laughs> no, I swear she's real, but she she just oh. goes to a different school. Yeah, she was she was definitely <laughs> real, but um, okay. Speak back to the school thing. Um, did you ever go to any school dances? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, there. One of my mentors growing up, um, he was the like school DJ basically. He was uh he taught people how to play guitar in Lake and in, in like in the surrounding areas, and uh, he accumulated just a a bunch of equipment. He always did stuff for uh like pet band. He'd come bring his own bass and amp and play bass with the pet band, and um he'd come with us and play for nursing homes and stuff like that. But, um, he was, he would always do the school dances. So I always went to, if not dance, which I went to dance. Okay. Uh, I, oh, I went to dance, but I would just hang out with him. Uh, it was either of those two reasons. But, okay. So he was a bass player, a guitar teacher and a DJ. school DJ. Yes. Okay. This man did it all. All right. That's a good man to have around, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, did you ever have a date to these school dances? And what and what uh, was this like sixth through eighth grade? Uh, was this high school only? What was this? Um, he well, he did mainly everything um, up until my last couple of years of high school, where my brother was actually the DJ. Okay, <laughs> he's uh, he was two grades ahead of me, so he graduated, and um, we did a bunch of music stuff. So we had equipment and stuff so then my brother filled in like my junior and senior year um but yeah sixth through eighth grade all through high school um i didn't have any dates never uh, not not one girl went, went to the dance with you well, yeah i mean i so do you, do you know what snowball is uh okay. it's probably not the probably not the thing that... winter formal okay oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so we call it snowball um <clears throat> i went with uh Actually had two dates, no big deal. Okay, but one is now my brother's wife. So, damn. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the snowball effect. Yeah, I had her first. Damn. Not really. Okay. He had her first, but <laughs> Very we nice. went. We went as friends, and then just like proms and stuff. I had dates to proms. But. Okay, cool. Man, okay. you wouldn't know him though. They went to a different school, and I don't have pictures of her. She doesn't have a camera phone. Yeah. So well. Yeah, you had blackberries back then, and the SIM card doesn't go yeah. with the. Her mom won't let her have a Facebook, so we can't. Yeah. Look her up either. Okay. But she, they were real for sure. That's cool, man. <laughs> uh, I did want to. I did want to comment on the fact that. Um. So your brother got out of school and then came back as the DJ. When I tried to come back, to the high school after I was out and be the DJ, they wouldn't let me do that. Dang. So. It was something about I needed to move on or what. I don't know. <laughs> Get out of the yearbook, Hunter. I don't know, dude. They said that I was living in my past, I guess. But Jeez. Jeez Louise. Okay. All right. So yeah. tell us about some um tell us about some jobs that you've done along the way. Yeah, I worked at Subway. Okay. For a while. Yeah. I was uh they uh as they called a sandwich artist. Okay. How many how many slices of ham they let you put on the uh, the Black Forest ham? Black so. Forest ham is ten. You do five, but you do two apiece. God dang it! Mm-hmm. I knew they were counting meat. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Um, you, you ever go? Sorry, you ever go to Jersey Mike's and and they just like just they're just so free will free will. I always meat. go to Jersey Mike's. That's like my God. it's top tier. That and Firehouse Subs are like. Dang near equal for me. Those are my favorite. Take me places. somewhere where they get liberal with the meat, and I'm I'm I'll pay a couple extra bucks. For yeah, that. yeah. I don't care how much it costs. Take my money. 
Subway, whenever they've got the little ice cream scoop out and they're, they're, they're plopping tuna onto your damn uh, Italian urban cheese bread, there's just <laughs> something about it that just turns you off from it. It's like, man, you guys are the, the richest fast food chain in America, yeah. and you won't let me have more than three slices. I'm going to have bacon. a dry sandwich. <laughs> How was your uh, Subway experience? Oh, I was the worst worker in the world. That was like my, um, that was my first job that I wasn't associated with like anything with my parents, except my mom worked at Subway too, I guess. But um, <clears throat> so my first actual job was I worked on a shingling crew um, for my dad's company. Whenever he was, he worked as a salesman in roofing. Um, I started there whenever I was fourteen. And then after that, I went into Subway because it was much easier work, and it was in my hometown. Um, roofing wasn't. It was in the next town over. Uh, but I worked there. I was a terrible worker. I don't know if I should be saying this, uh, but I would. whenever my friends would come in, I would go up to the thing and ring them like I was ringing them in for a sandwich. Okay. But I would just hit add cheese, so it was 52 cents. I'd let them get whatever they wanted. I would just hit add cheese, so it's 52 cents. My best friends. Nice. And then I'd take their 52 cents, so there's a transaction for the cameras. And then I'd give them their sandwich. But they had to come back whenever it was time to close and mop the floors and wash the dishes. Hell, yeah. While I put the stuff away and counted the money and stuff. So. Well, that's a lot more honorable than the story I'm about to tell about when <laughs> I worked at Fast Food, dude. Okay, so... I worked at I worked at Sonic, and uh, dude, my manager at Sonic was oh my god, dude! I was sixteen. I don't handle stress the greatest right now, but when I was sixteen, I definitely didn't handle stress well at all. <laughs> and this dude was on my case all the time. I mean, like he was he was borderline verbally uh, rough around the edges. Okay, I'll say that. Uh, but. Man, he'd been on me about getting orders out quicker because we had like this three-minute goal we had to meet. And there was one time, it was out, It was a Friday night, football, right after the football game, all the people stormed the parking lot. You know, it's it, it goes from being completely dead to a complete madhouse. Yeah. And um, anyway, um, somebody orders a chicken strip dinner, okay, and... You have to have the food out in three and a half minutes, and chicken strips themselves take four minutes to cook. So luckily, I already had some chicken strips dropped, and I was just like right on pace. And this was like one of 20 orders I had to get out, okay? And the manager, he's like, come on, Hunter, come on, let's get this out. Come on, come on. And um, he turned to go back to the front where they were making ice cream and stuff, and I dropped one of the damn chicken strips on the floor. <laughs> And I looked at it and I said, man, this is totally unethical, but I do not feel like having this son of a bitch <laughs> yell at me any more than he already has. So I picked that damn chicken strip up and I threw it in the Bam. box. And then there was another time. <laughs> God, I was, I was, it was, by the way, this is the worst job I've ever had. I will never work in fast food again, dude. I'm with you, dude. I, I could do it. <sighs> there was one time where uh, I was with my friend Brett. He was working back there, too. Sorry, Brett, if I'm throwing you another bus here, but. Uh, there we was, changed names up. Don't yeah. say Brett. Uh, Steve. Who's Steve? Yeah, Steve. <laughs> we are. <said> well, <laughs> anyway, uh, it was completely dead, man. There was no excuse for this, but two orders of mozzarella sticks. There's five mozzarella sticks that come in each little carton, and uh, anyway, so there's five mozzarella sticks that come in each carton, and for some reason, I dropped nine mozzarella sticks and they're supposed to be 10 to make two orders and it was another one of those things where like we were getting in trouble because we weren't getting the food out quick enough so i looked at brett and i said dude if we get if we get in trouble for this i'll take the fall for it i took one mozzarella stick i ripped it in half and i stuck one oh, in each no. <laughs> so when those people got home they had four and a half mozzarella sticks dude if that happened to me i would i would burn sonic down dude oh so, my yeah, god dude, i i Let's, let's just say I put in my two weeks and went to the snow cone stand. Nice. I started working in the snow cone stand. Did you was, actually? Yeah. Oh. Tropical snow. Yeah, so, dude, I really did hate fast food more than anything. So, just so you know, if you're watching or listening and you work at fast food, I have the utmost respect for you because uh, that's a job that I could not do again. 
So thank you for doing that, and especially whenever uh, the Uber's uh, driving us through at 2 in the morning yeah. after we've been been out uh, having a couple of cold sarsaparillas with our buddies. Yeah. You deal with all the dumb stuff that we yell into the mm-hmm. microphone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, fun fact, my brother and his wife own a snow cone stand. What brand is it? It's called the Shiver Shack. Throw mm. Throwing a little thing. What brought them to nice. doing that? Um, in Lakin, in small like in that small town out there, at least, like you have to keep yourself busy, otherwise you're gonna go insane. So everybody works like nine jobs. Okay. Like uh, my mom's a school nurse, and then she's also uh, runs a bowling alley, and then also works at the cemetery, and also runs her own uh fireworks stand and also has a pizza like makes pizza and sells pizza like it's you sells pizza out of her house out of the bowling alley okay so oh wait you're gonna tell me that she makes homemade pizza at the bowling alley it's hunt brothers okay yeah good stuff but she she bought the like they got the rights or whatever and they got the um oven pizza oven and mm-hmm. all that stuff yeah it's but that's what I'm saying is like you you have like nine thousand different jobs, just just keep yourself busy, busy. Otherwise you, like you can't do cool stuff like go downtown like we do or go watch some some mm-hmm. live music. So my brother uh, and his wife got the Shiver Shack and they started to do that, and they've kind of built it up where they got a like high school kids working for them and stuff. So okay, what's your favorite flavor? I don't know. I've never had it. You haven't? Mm-mm. Damn it, dude! Peach and guava was always the you mix those, one on each side, and then two big old pours right down the middle, and I think, then honestly a scoop of ice cream underneath all of it. Well, they have they. I don't even know how it works, but they have stuff called snow caps that they put on top of it. And I think it's that's like cream. Yeah. 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 And then I think a flavor they have is called Tiger Blood. Yeah, that's uh that's coconut and strawberry. That was that's pretty real, good. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how was it growing up at the bowling alley? Mm. You were talking to me about this the other day, and. Uh, yes, he does have all of his, uh, his fingers, so. Almost. I've almost cut this one off several times. Was it, was it working on the bowling machine? No. <laughs> no, actually, this is construction stuff. Um. Box cutter? This was a box cutter, yeah. I got a, uh, miter saw right here. Um, no, I, I didn't, gr- uh, grow up working at the bowling alley. They've only acquired that in the last four years. Something like that. Okay. Four or five. And they, they just run it. They don't own it. Okay. Yeah. So if the workers go on strike, it doesn't really affect them. On strike, nice. Couple spare employees. Gosh, dang it. He's quick with it. <laughs> I can't. I My mom runs the place. I can't even think of one. <laughs> so, okay. So I pictured you with... You know, a couple Allen wrenches tearing apart the, the the bowling feeders or whatever they call mm-hmm. the the conveyor belt with the with the bowl bowling balls coming mm-hmm. up. And I was going to ask you, do you put your fingers in the ball or do you just grab it like a damn uh, river rock? Tips, just the tips in two. Leave the thumb out. Okay. Curve or no? Yeah. You do curve it. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your highest score? Two, I'd probably say like two forty, something. God, okay. Yeah, but that's that doesn't happen often. Yeah, if I can break a hundred, I'm doing something. Damn it. Okay. All right. So, very cool. Um, you said that you said that this place is uh, pretty good, close to Colorado. Did you ever venture into Colorado? All the time. Okay. All the time. Uh, my sister lives in all, in Colorado, and also, uh, um, I was in. Were you in Cubs, Cubs, Cats, Boy Scouts? Man, I wasn't. Uh, did a couple ride-alongs with them. Tied a couple knots. Slung a couple fishing lures. But uh, ride-alongs, they do that. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I was in Cub Scouts. So uh, every year we went into Pikes Peak, mm. and uh, that's a mountain. Yeah. That is a mountain. That's a peak. Colorado Springs. Yeah, I took a peak up there, and uh, they had lodges up there. We'd stay up there for, I can't even remember how long, probably at least four days. Um, 
We, we do that all the time. So that's where you learn to snowboard? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Gotcha. And didn't you say you go on a trip every year with your high school friends? You go skiing or snowboarding? Oh, no. Me and my brother try and we always uh, try and make one happen, but it doesn't happen as often as we'd like. Yeah. We schedule one every year, but it never it doesn't happen every year. <laughs> yeah. Well, we get busy, man, and yeah. uh, it's easy. We get busy and we get poor, and yeah. it's really easy to let either one of those or both uh, come in between a ski trip. Busy and broke. That might be a song. Busy title. and broke. Not too bad. <laughs> B&B. Yeah. Maybe that's what Airbnb means. Yeah. I don't know why Air bro- Busy and Broke would be the name of a uh, lodging company, but. If it was my company, that's what it would be stand for. Yeah, uh, I'm lucky enough that I'm going to be going to. Uh, I think we're going to go to Breckenridge in almost exactly a month. Me and all my high school friends. I skipped out on it last year, but um, as busy as I am right now, and as much as I don't want to spend the money, I'm going to be there. So that'll be super cool. Uh, we always go to Copper Mountain, but we're doing. Uh, we're going to do uh, something a little bit different this year. So nice. It's absolutely beautiful beautiful country up there yeah um true, true. did you uh what kind of stuff did you do for fun growing up other than uh chasing prairie dogs and and drink alcohol and drinking alcohol <laughs> yeah uh man it was like mainly sports is what kept everybody so busy but um music like every day i was out at my uh grandpa's house and we were playing music that's pretty much like he was either at ours or I was out at his. Okay. Picking guitars. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else we did. Just any sort of debauchery we can get into. Sneaking to, uh, sneaking onto the golf course at like midnight, just to shotgun beers on the green. Made no sense, but okay. How, were you about eleven? How old did you, <laughs> you were? <laughs> at that point, I I probably shouldn't say, but um, <clears throat> definitely twenty one. Uh, no, this is uh, probably senior year. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything we did whenever I was younger than that. Um, it was mainly like sports. Go to somebody's house, play video games. Yeah. Big video games. All of us are into video games. Um, go, yeah. Well, I do got to say, I don't feel quite as bad now. Um, the reason you're so the reason you're so good at a uh, at guitar and I shouldn't compare myself is because you you and, your, you and your Paul spent hours and hours and hours and hours playing. Yeah, it was it was like every day he would because he lived just outside of town. Um, he would come in and my mom and dad would make dinner and they liked to drink and so did he. So it was just like a hey let's get together and drink and then get your guitar. I brought mine and then that's how nice. I ended up and. Man, yeah. Five hours later. I, I wish I would have started sooner. Um, I had, I think the, the only, the only, uh, like my, my mom sings in church, and then my, 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 my grandma, her mom, uh, she sings as well. But um, my mom's sister, Leslie, and her whole family, they've, they're like, they all play instruments, all sing. They do like the bluegrass thing. Um, they were the only people in my family that really did music. Um, and I always enjoyed watching them at Christmas and stuff. You know, they'd always play a song or two. So, what would you th- what would you say is the coolest experience that you've had in Nashville since you've lived here for about six months? And it can be anything, man. It can be it can be a show you played. It can be something that you've gone out and done. Um, it can be it can be anything. It's honestly just being here is like it's I'm, it's so full of cool experiences. Um, the thing I wasn't prepared for was making as good of friends and the amount of good friends that I made being here because I thought for sure I was going to be here like trying to, and it's, I owe a lot of it to you because, um, me and Hunter had met each other before I even moved down here. And he was the first, he was the first person. As soon as I moved, he was like, let's hang. And, uh, We've been let's hanging ever since, but, um, it's like being invited to stuff and like going and experiencing stuff with people. Cause most of the people that 
I've met down here are just as fresh as me. Um, so we're all kind of like experiencing new stuff at the same time, which makes it cool. But just having friends, man, having friends and being here is like, um, I, I wouldn't have had as good of a time as I've had here if I didn't have as many friends as good of friends that I have. Yeah. Here. So it's hard, it's hard to put the best memory in one memory because it's all been like, it's like the first days of college basically is what it feels like whenever you first get there and you're just like all experiencing new stuff or you're all like, I'm just, I'm trying to take it all in while I'm, while I'm here. Mm -hmm. I can't really pin it all in one, one memory. Yeah. There's a lot going on. It can be a blur. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes there's a a physical reason why it can be a, a blur. There was, there was one time, um, it was like my, third second week or third week here um we got asked to play a show but i needed a full band and i didn't have a band down here because i hadn't been here that long enough and i hadn't met anybody so i they were like hey can you play tomorrow and i was like um let me make some calls so i called my band from kansas and asked all them i was like can you guys get on a flight tomorrow would you guys be interested in getting on a flight tomorrow and flying out here and then playing a show that night. And it took some convincing, but I got all of them to fly out. And then we played a show. And then we hung out and had a good time afterwards. And then he called the next day and he was like, can you guys play again? And one of us had a flight um, not long after we were supposed to finish that show. So he left, um, like maybe halfway through the show to get there on time. Well, was he the drummer? No, he was a guitar player. <laughs> so, so luckily, <laughs> I had all my guitar stuff, and I'm not tremendous at guitar, but I, it was enough to like round out the last part of our show, you know. So that's like the most memorable thing, I just because it was so exciting and so like, um anxiety filled because i was like i i need to play the show i need to try and make a name while i'm here you know like the i've got the i gotta strike while the fire's hot you know Mm -hmm. and i think that's just the most memorable because it was so anxiety filled trying to like convince people to come and then get plane tickets and then make sure i picked them up and make sure we were there on time like it was yeah it's probably the most memorable moment but yeah anyways that was a long well, that's cool, Long man. Trip to get there. Um, there's a there's a pattern that I'm that I keep seeing or and hearing about, and you know, it's that you you make you make things happen whenever whenever uh, it's not easy to make things happen. Tell these folks about um, how you got back to uh, to Mo Country. To <laughs> oh up. my gosh! Um, so we were playing a a show um, back in Kansas City. It was a decent sized show, um, and. I had one of those, one of those guys. Um, he's a bass player. He was with me down here because he was taking a look at Nashville, seeing if he wanted to move or not. Um, this is some time after that, that uh, first, first show. So he was down here trying to see if he he wanted to view the like songwriter side. He was going to songwriters rounds and going to like some open mics and stuff like that. But while he was down here, we picked up a show. And I asked him if he wanted to play bass, and he said, sure. And it was the night before our show in Kansas City that we had to go back to. So uh, we got in the truck. The show was closing, 10 to 2 a.m. On our way to the show, currently lived in Gallatin at the time. Um, we were leaving Gallatin. We maybe got like four or five miles outside of Gallatin and the car in front of us hit a deer deer landed in the middle of the road and we straight up cut that thing in half and it completely destroyed the front left wheel housing of my truck God. and we oh man I, f- I feel so dumb after this but we were driving it and it's just making like the most horrendous noise and my bassist is like, uh, his name's Matthew. 
Matthew was like, um, is everything all right? And I was like, I think there's just some like guts in the, in the brakes or something, you know, it's just, it's squealing. It can't be that bad. Right. Cause obviously we're still going and you know, I tapped the brakes and it stopped squealing for a second. I was like, see, it's just some stuff in the brakes. We're good. And then it starts squealing again. And eventually we made it to the, to the venue, parked, played the show, went to leave, truck wouldn't start. Fuse was blown for the starter. But this was at 2 a.m., so uh, we couldn't we couldn't do anything about it because everything was closed. So we uh, I called up the drummer that played with us, and I was like, hey, can we sleep on your floor or sleep at your place? And uh, he was like, yeah, sure, no problem. So he picked us up, took us to his place. We slept. I slept on the floor. Matthew slept on the couch. We Ubered to Walmart. I picked up fuses. Then we Ubered back to my truck, got the truck started, got 30, is Clarksville like 30 miles, 40 miles ish? Yeah. It's, it's 45 minutes away from Nashville. Yeah. Got about 45 minutes away from Nashville. And the whole time my truck is like just pulling left and right. And, uh, the closer I, I get to Clarksville, like 30, 30 miles, 30 you gotta be back to Kansas city that day. Yeah. We're headed back to Kansas city for the show. That is that night. Um, our original intent was to play the show, leave at 2 a.m. as soon as we finished, and drive all the way to Kansas City. Get there, have a nap, play the show with plenty of time. <sighs> but uh, couldn't do that. So we get to Clarksville, all the way to Clarksville, 45 minutes away, and my brakes are going out, and I can't steer this thing. And uh, so I tell Matthew, I was like, dude, we, this is as far as we go. We can't pull up. We can't go any further. So we pull over, and I'm calling the bandmates, telling them, like, dude, we, we can't play. I'm calling the venue owner, saying, like, sorry, hit a deer, truck is ruined, can't do anything. And uh, it was Matthew's idea, but we were like, let's let's see how much an Uber costs. And it couldn't. we couldn't Uber as far as Kansas City. It wouldn't let us. They were like, it's just too far. So it said St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. We could Uber there, four hundred bucks, and we we're like, it'll take us the same amount of time as it would take one of them, my bandmates, to drive to Kansas City. Pull the old diamond reel, meet you in the middle. Yeah, to, Lu- to St. Louis. So, called up uh, Seth, drummer, said, "Meet us in St. Louis," and then we t- Ubered to St. Louis. Met in the middle, drove there. We got six. We got there six minutes after we were supposed to be doing sound check. That's amazing. That's how you do something with nothing. Yeah. From Clarksville, Tennessee, yeah, to St. Louis is like three hours and fifteen minutes. Insane, so, dude. That's 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 freaking amazing. Man, anything crazy been going on new? Uh, anything anything new and crazy been going on with you? Not really. We uh, it's kind of been, you know, people warn you. Um, whenever you first move here and you. Uh, talk to musicians. They warn you about the slow season, mm. and I wasn't. I'll be honest. I wasn't prepared because I figured the slow season would have happened November, December, during the holidays. Yeah, but and no, people come here for the holidays. That makes a bunch of sense now. Yeah, I thought for sure it was going to be October, November, December, and it's January, February, and I bet March it probably starts to pick up more. But yeah. Yeah, I was ill-prepared. But we've uh, been doing a lot of writing. That's like the craziest thing. Yeah. More more writing than I've ever done. Actually, more writing than I've ever done. Um, we've been writing together. I know. A lot. I was... T- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've... Uh, I don't know if people are telling the truth, but like every person I talk to that's like a songwriter, they're like, oh yeah, dude, I write 200 songs a year. And maybe some of them do, maybe all of them do, but me, I've never been that person. Um, so it's been really, really cool to be writing, like, you know. As two, much as we have. Probably two songs a week for the last month or two. Yeah. Uh, probably the last month, but, yeah. we, you know, we got a lot more stuff on the books, and um, I'm just really, really excited about that. And uh, you've been writing some really, really cool stuff. Um, 
which uh, not to put you on the spot, but would you uh, would you be down to play a song on the air here? Yeah, I'd, yeah, sure. I don't have a guitar or anything. Okay. But. Well, I got one behind me here in the frame, but oh, uh, yeah. uh, is there if you were gonna play a song, um, is there is there one that would stick out to you that you'd wanna you'd wanna play? Um, yeah, I have one, uh, especially since we're talking about um, we were talking about like southwestern Kansas and stuff like that. Um, I have one I wrote with Blaine Younger, uh, called "Get Out of Dodge." He's from Hayes, Kansas. Okay. Do you know where that's at? Uh, refresh me. <laughs> it's it's uh, western Kansas for sure. Um, but there's like a college there, a big college there, Fort Hayes State University. Um, big drinking town. Uh, but he... he brought, Walking around in a haze. <laughs> Kansas. Yeah. Um, he, brought, he brought up the song titled Get Out of Dodge. Um whenever we were writing together and he was like, it only makes sense that there'd be two Southwestern Kansas boys or two Western Kansas boys that would write that song. Right. And I was like, yeah. And I can't remember if it was him or me, but we were like, what if it was the, what if it was the, um, the brand of vehicle and not the town? What if it was like, that's all I get out of Dodge. Yeah. Is, you know, the memories of a girl or, somebody you know um and we kind of ran with that and that's whenever we came up with this song get out of dodge uh that that's that's the song i would probably play i'd well hell yeah um man uh i've you know i've had the pleasure of hearing you play that at, at uh at live oak at the midtown hoedown the last couple times that we've done that and um that's a, it's a great song and it's one of those songs where um you know as a songwriter whenever i hear it uh, I'm a little bit jealous that I didn't think of that first. <laughs> so, um, I've been I've been lucky enough to have a couple a couple song titles like that where you know it's like it's kind of fits that curriculum of like you know man that was obvious how the hell do we yeah, not think right. of that so um, but yeah this is a really really good one uh, do you need a capo yeah if you okay. got one here's this first and the yeah. capo's coming right after it it's half a step down beautiful there's a pick thank you. And we'll probably have to. I don't know where this needs to be. I'll probably put it right in y'all. There you go, right there, buddy. Thanks, sir. Might discover something new. Maybe this will record nice and neat, and we can uh, start doing some acoustic shit. Have you ever seen? Uh, there's a YouTube video of a guy that does his. He's either at like Harvard or Yale or something like that. Um, and he's doing some kind of poison ivy. Uh, uh, it's a school with the <laughs> Ivy League. Ivy League, exactly. It's a Batman villain. Um, it's, it's a gal. She's uh, attractive. Ivy League. That's yeah. <clears throat> um, I went to a Mossy Oak school. Nah, they're they're not. Wow, that's actually that might be a song title right there, Mossy Oak. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll have to, if we do write that, I'll have to let you take it. <laughs> Because <laughs> you can't have can't. two Mossy Oak things. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he's he's doing a, uh, perf- a performance. It's like his, what do they call that? Whenever you're getting your doctorate, you need a... a uh... Prescription. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. It's his, it's his final, it's his final, like, uh, performance as a, for his, he was learning like, guitar. Oh. Yeah, it's. I, I I forget the word. Like the like for a lawyer, it's the bar. Yeah. For a doctor, it's like the tea cap or some shit. Like yeah, that. it's a, it's something like that. But he's he's doing a performance because he's learning guitar at Harvard or whatever, and he comes out and he's playing it, but he has it upside down, and he's like, and it's probably perfect. I no, no, it's terrible, and everybody has no idea what he's doing because he's, trying, <laughs> he's like trying to play it, and it sounds terrible. He's like, oh oh, and then he like plays like this really cool shit, and everybody loses their mind. But hell yeah. I was thinking about doing that. That's Nothing like a little Harvard humor. Yeah. Harvard's known for their humor. No doubt. Right. Grade A humor. <laughs> Grade A humor. I, I just got that. All right. This song's called Get Out of Dodge. That old truck's been sitting out there for long enough 
She'd probably take it for a spin and make sure she fires back up. But there's one thing keeping me from taking it on the town. Baby, it's your memory. It's always bringing around. I get the miles out of a Chevy. I get the horses out of Ford. I take a Tundra, I take any two wheel drive or four by four. Just to leave those memories parked inside that old garage. Cause that's all I get out of Dodge. You still got that CD that you burned me on that same song when you left. That empty front seat leaves me hurting when I remember what you said. In that back seat where you kiss me is all I see in the rear view. That old truck ain't going nowhere, baby, unless it's got you. I get the miles out of a Chevy. I get the horses out of Ford. I take a Tundra, I take any two-wheel drive or four by four. Just to leave those memories parked inside that old garage. Cause that's all I get out of Dodge. Yeah, that's all I get out of Dodge. All my friends keep telling me that I should probably trade it in But I'll keep holding on in case you come back again I get the miles out of a Chevy I get the horses out of Ford I take a Tundra, I take any two-wheel driver Four by four Just to leave those memories Parked inside that old garage Cause that's all I get out of Dodge That's all I get out of Dodge Dude, uh... Man, that's such a good song. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> I love that. Um, can I... Can you, uh... Can you do Cheap Shot real quick? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm a big old I'm a big old Kyle Austin fan, and I've been hearing him play a lot of these songs, and and I really really think that uh, anybody who's anybody who follows my my page will uh, will definitely like this song too. So tell them a little bit about this one, and then we'll uh, we'll hang it up for yeah. this first episode, man, and uh, we'll see if everything recorded right. And yeah, yeah. Um, this song's called Cheap Shot. Uh, um, it's about Whenever you see somebody at the bar that broke your heart or did you wrong in some way, you buy them the cheapest alcohol you can find to remind them what they did to you. So essentially, uh, it's a cheap shot for a cheap shot um, in return. But in the second verse, I use a bunch of different alcohol names as a way to tell a story. And uh, if you can count all of them, you have a problem. And uh, that's why we're all here. This is a intervention for you. But <laughs> this song's called Cheap Shot. Did you have some? Did you have a quip? Nope. No. Oh, dang it! <laughs> I was hoping you did. I'm gonna have to do this right quick. There we go. I was just jacking with you. <laughs> jacking. See? Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't stay in tune real good. I gotta get her set up. That's all right. She's good enough for the girls I date. Oh, that's right. All right. This song's called Cheap Shot. Um, if I can remember. Uh. Well, it's been a while since I seen your face, girl. I know you come here often. This used to be yours and my favorite place. But I ain't hung up on the way you did me wrong. I'll even buy you a drink if it helps to get you to move on. No, this ain't no joke. I didn't lose no bed. 
It wasn't easy to forgive But I damn sure didn't forget And I hope that it goes down rough Just like the one that you gave me I won't stick around to see you down When it knocks you off of your feet Oh, I waste the good stuff It won't cost me a whole lot But cheers to you This one's on me Ready or not, oh here comes a cheap shot. Well, a little old crow told me that you were sleeping around. I can't remember if it was Jack or Jim that helped tarnish your crown. And there ain't no way, Jose, this gentleman's ever gonna change his mind. You were a bullet dodge, how about a shot of your own medicine this time? And I hope that it goes down rough just like the one that you gave me. I won't stick around to see you down and it knocks you off of your feet. I waste the good stuff, it won't cost me a whole lot But cheers to you, this one's on me, ready or not well, Here comes a cheap shot well, Here comes a cheap shot Well it's getting late and I've had my fun I hope you drink about All the damage that you've done And I won't close this bar down Just to be your last call So here comes a lesson Return in alcohol And I hope that it goes down rough Just like the one that you gave me I won't stick around to see you down when it knocks you off of your feet. Oh, I waste the good stuff, it won't cost me a whole lot. The cheers to you, this one's on me, ready or not. Oh, here comes a cheap shot. Here comes a cheap shot. All right, man, that's Cheap Shot by uh, your boy Kyle Austin. You got to know him today, man, and uh, you heard the story. You know that he's uh, he's somebody just like we are. Uh, man, grew up in a, in a little bitty town, and, uh, you know, that's why I wanted to interview folks like us. And uh, obviously you can tell he's a very, very talented individual. Kyle, um, if you could uh, if you could, if you could leave somebody out there in a small town that thinks that they're you know, hey, I'm from a small town, man. I don't think I can, I don't think I can do something. Um, you know, I don't think I can dream big. Is there is there any kind of advice that you would give somebody uh, that's kind of in that frame of mind? Because I know uh, for me, growing up, uh, that's that's kind of how I felt, man. I was like, you know, I, I I feel like I feel like there's only a couple paths for somebody like me, and and you know, I, I got I only have a couple options, and uh, you know, for me, life has been. Life has been tremendous uh, figuring out the fact that I, I truly can do whatever I want. So do you have any advice for somebody who's maybe stuck in that in that frame of mind of, uh, of uh, you know, being hesitant to dream big? You're not trapped. Um, if it feels like you – if it feels like you can't achieve something because of where you're at, um, it's not a forever thing. Uh, that's, that, that's for – if you live somewhere or where you feel like you're at in life, it's not a forever thing. It's just, it's momentary. Um, make the small victories feel like big ones um, because um, you don't get anywhere without steps, small steps. So, um, you know, practice every day at what you love, what you want to do. And um, it's not about, um, it's not about achieving the long-term goals quickly. It's about, knowing what the steps are to get there and making sure you achieve those steps to get there. Um, 
it's it's the small it's the small victories making them, making them feel like big ones. That's what. So it makes you feel good. I think so, man. I think, I think life's all about the. I think life's all about the small things and really living in the moment, like you said, and uh, you know, enjoying where you're at, and uh, just just taking pride in what you do. So, um, you guys, this has been episode one. Uh, I'm sure that this uh, this stuff's going to get a lot better as I figure out how to host a podcast. We'll probably uh, we'll probably shoot this a fourth time. Yeah. Yeah, this is this. Hopefully, this third time will be the charm. But, uh, yeah. but man, thank you guys so much for watching or listening uh, to this this episode one. And thanks for having me on, Hunter. Yeah, I buddy. appreciate it, man. Yeah, this, this is uh, it's cool to like. I've I've lived it, so I don't really think it's a you know talking about it, it's not a big deal. But talking about it makes you feel good about it, and um, sharing your story is it's uh, it's nice to have like some sort of outlet for that, you know? So, well, yeah, man. And, and, um, I'm just always reminded, uh, whenever I'm, I'm kind of feeling down and feeling like nothing I'm doing uh, really matters. There always is like that, you know, that person that sends a message to me or something. And it's, it's, you know, you can, whatever the sign is, the stuff that we do, you know, believe it or not, has a, has a, has a big impact on at least a couple people. Yeah. And that's more than I ever thought it would be. And, you know, I, th- I think it is a lot more special than we give ourselves credit for. Um, definitely not riding a high horse by saying that. But I'm, I'm saying that um, you should definitely enjoy it because you have a great talent. And uh, I'm glad to know you. And thank you for being the first damn yeah, dude. Uh, guy on the podcast. Yeah. So hopefully uh, there will be there will be a bunch of more episodes uh, of this. But uh, I want I can't wait to introduce you guys to the rest of my friends. And uh, introduce you to some uh, to some more folks like us. Boom. See y'all next time. I met a woman about six foot seven. Caught my eye at the Seven Eleven. Buying Jack Link's jerky and a carton of Marlboro.